Hi there, this is Bailey Shelton with Soapbox Zine, and I am here today with Andrea Mori, uh, who was in our issue a few times. She's been a contributor for us, but she's also a senior photography student here at Ball State University. Uh, so we're gonna see a little sneak peek of her process and what she's working on today as she's printing off part of her senior project. Um, if you have any questions for Andrea, you can drop them in the comments below and we'll try and get to them. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Andrea, what are we looking at today? Um, today we're seeing some of the work that I'm printing. Um, Can we hear a little bit about your process? Yeah, so normally I'm going to start out with a journal. Um, I just kind of draw up some ideas or like kind of describe like shots in my head that I'm thinking of um, during the shooting process. Normally, if I'm doing self-portraits, I will have like an assistant with me to kind of help me like plan it out, have them stand in my place, um, work on like the focus and composition and things, and then put it on a self-timer, run and pose and things like that. Um, so what about like, let's talk about um, like this specifically as a self-portrait. Did you like, what was the setup in order to get like this specific angle? Yeah, so I guess with this one, um, it was just taken on my bed. I laid down a couple different kinds of fabrics. Um, I think I just had it on a tripod and I was testing out uh, different angles, more like with my body than the camera than anything. Um, it's kind of just about like setting it on a self timer and making sure it gets multiple shots and trying to like change up your pose in between those. Mm -hmm. So you're getting like a variety of different angles. Um, so one of the ones I see here that I'm really curious about is actually uh, this one right here and how you like, I guess, mimicked like the typography with your hair. Yeah, so um, I have a collection of my hair that I started <laughs> um, uh, and I just had it in a box and I had these shots in mind. Um, so I just kind of took longer and shorter strands of hair and um, I kind of wetted the sink first and all I did was kind of draw. Use, yeah, I used my hand to kind of draw it out. Um, it took a really long time, but it's possible. It's just kind of about getting the hair wet first. So um, of these shots, which one would you say is your favorite? Um, I think my favorite is definitely this one because it turned out to be a happy accident in editing. Um, I actually wasn't very happy with those shots when I was first shooting them and first looking at them in my editing software. I was like, mm, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. Uh, but it happened to be a happy accident when I started manipulating them. So tell me a little bit about what inspired a few of these, like the bathroom photos with the haircut and everything like that. Um, so a lot of these are based off of the effects of childhood trauma that I faced, obviously, in my childhood and how it manifested into my adulthood today. So with some of these, I'm thinking about, like, in these ones with the mirror and the hair, I'm thinking about um, identity and um, I'm losing my train of thought. I was thinking about um, like body image uh, and how that was kind of affected. Um, I think about how like I use my hair to kind of feel more in control. Um, so that one, that's what that one is about. Uh, these are about kind of like self-defense and intimacy. Um, this one um, kind of plays off of some of my other shots that I've done about um, kind of just the feeling of isolation and being alone and kind of just being there for myself and that one. Um, and then the ones that I'm working on now uh, for my thesis show, um, I am trying to make more about like a cleansing or like an acceptance of like everything that has happened. So that's what these are a little bit more about in the ones that I'm printing right now. So yeah. So you can now see part of it start to like peek out. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like the material you're using and like why you chose that? Yeah. So um, a lot 
lot of my past work, I have been working with textiles and fabric, um, embroidery thread, um, and I think some of that stemmed from um, just thinking about how other textile artists use their work to kind of like tell a story, specifically with like quilting and things like that. Um, also, I just thought embroidery thread was nice for, you know, writing things like in the actual photos to give more context than what's actually there. Um, yeah, the fabric that I'm printing on right now, or the paper, I guess, it's um, a satin cloth paper. So you can see it's pretty thin. Um, it's backlit. It's a little glossy on the back. I don't know if you can tell there. Um, you can see on this one more a little bit. That's the back side. Yeah, it's really thin. Um, it's not super cloth-like. Like, it's not able to be draped very well, but it's pretty thin to where you could, like, hang it and, like, fit in embroidery hoops and things like that. So what all were you kind of... Um, what has been kind of the challenges of doing this project with this, like pretty unique material and it's on such a like close to home subject. Um, what have been kind of the challenges you faced trying to express this? Um, I first started working with uh, this subject my sophomore year, like the end of my first photo class is when I started delving into this because I wanted to make work that I cared about and this subject wasn't something that normally I would be just talking about out of the blue. Um, so I kind of introduced it slowly and went at my own pace, just uh, talked about what I was comfortable with. Um, and then it started to become really cathartic. Um, so I think at first it was more challenging just to kind of find a voice. Um, but I realized that a lot of people were responding really well to it. Um, so I just kind of kept at it. Um, yeah, it's been really therapeutic. And you've gotten a lot of like attention with this project. I've seen online people have been like reaching out and DMing you and saying like, hey, I really get this. This speaks to me. What's that process been like, like actually hearing people see your art for the first time? Yeah, it always kind of hits home for me. It's it's really nice to hear people's feedback. Um, it's, it's not the best thing to hear when people relate to it, but I think that's also sort of empowering to feel like you're not alone if somebody else has been through like the same subject, you know? For sure. So where can people see your current work and your upcoming work? I know that you're showing a few pieces now. Yeah, so um, if you've seen, there is a student show going on in the uh, gallery in the atrium. I'm kind of linking on Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of student work down there. I have two pieces in there, um, both from my work that I was doing last semester that will be included in my thesis this year. Um, I have some work usually in the display cases on the second floor of AJ, usually out there. Um, and then we will figure out when our uh, senior thesis shows will be after spring break. Have you started looking at like post-graduation stuff? Like what's your plan once Ball State is not the plan anymore? Um, right now I'm kind of looking at more commercial photography jobs and thinking about doing fine art things on the side for now. Um, still kind of in that process. So that's a, to be continued, I guess. For sure. All right. Uh, well, that concludes our Facebook Live for today. I want to thank Andrea Mori for coming out and letting us kind of hijack her space. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to comment them below, and we'll try and answer them as best we can. But for now, thank you guys for tuning in.